Uh, a German reporter who admitted to faking news stories could now face embezzlement charges. The German newspaper Der Spiegel says it's filing a criminal complaint alleging that Klaus Relotius uh, accepted donations for Syrian orphans from readers and allegedly pocketed the proceeds. Uh, well, for more on this, I'm joined now by Lena Roche from our German service. Good morning to you, Good Lena. Morning. Uh, so just tell us a little bit more uh, about the context of this and, of course, about this this journalist, about uh, Klaas uh, Relotius. Well, Klaas Relotius is a star journalist, like you said, 33-year-old. He won uh, many awards for his work as a journalist. And now it turns out that he faked uh, most of his stories. Uh, he worked mostly for the prestigious magazine uh, Der Spiegel, but his work was also published abroad. And um, nearly all of his reports are works of fiction. So, as you can imagine, this is a huge scandal in Germany. Uh, Der Spiegel used to be as trustworthy and as uh, fact-checking and uh, yeah, trustworthy as maybe the BBC or the New York Times. And now they are faced with this uh, huge scandal. So they are playing the card of transparency. They are promising to investigate, to reinvestigate all of his stories and to change, obviously, uh, how things work in, uh, inside uh, the, the magazine. And uh, it was another uh, Spiegel report uh, Juan Moreno, uh, freelancer, who discovered this, that Velocius was lying in his stories. And uh, like all whistleblowers, Moreno at the beginning had lots of difficulties convincing his boss and nearly faced uh, being uh, fired uh, over his uh, accusations against this star journalist. Yeah, the, rep the reputational damage exactly. <laughs> is enormous. Oh, yes. Tell us a little bit more about the, the actual embezzlement charges that are being brought against him. Well, so the fake stories, that was the first uh, big uh, news. And then the second news is the, uh, are these embezzlement charges. In 2016, Relotius wrote a very touching report about two siblings, Syrian siblings, uh, living in Turkey, uh, orphans. And uh, many readers were touched by this story and asked how they could help. So he told them uh, to send uh, money uh, to him. And so uh, this money uh, didn't go to the children, but ended up on his private bank account. And, uh, and also it turns out that these children don't really exist like he portrayed, he portrayed them. The boy exists, but he's not an orphan. And the girl is just a product of his imagination. Oh, wow. So their Spiegel will have to work very hard in order to gain back the trust of their readers. Absolutely. And for such a huge newspaper, that's uh, extremely damaging. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Lena Roche uh, there from our German service. Mr. Trump announced on Sunday morning on Twitter that Patrick Shanahan, the current deputy at the Pentagon, would step up at the start of the new year. International reaction to Mattis's decision has continued uh, with French President Emmanuel Macron describing the move as regrettable. Je regrette très profondément la décision prise en Syrie et je veux ici rendre hommage au général Matisse et aux propos qui ont accompagné sa décision. All right, there we go. That was uh, President Emmanuel Macron, French president, uh, uh, calling the decision by Donald uh, Trump to pull forces out of Syria as regrettable, saying that it calls into question uh, the, al the alliance between the two nations. Well, for more uh, on this story, I'm joined now by our correspondent in Paris, Annelies uh, Borges. Good morning to you, Annelies. Uh, just tell us uh, what Macron is scared of now that the US is deciding to pull out. Of course, these are coalition partners on the ground. Good morning, Bell. Well, a lot can happen as uh, a result of the U.S.'s decision to pull out from Syria. First and foremost, of course, there are fears that we could see a rapid resurgence of the so-called Islamic State. Recent reports uh, suggest that as many as 14,000 fighters are still thought to be active, hiding in uh, Syria, more in Iraq, and we could see them try to reorganize and uh, rebuild uh, their network. And Emmanuel Macron, with uh, this decision by uh, the U.S. president to pull out from Syria, Emmanuel Macron now becomes the biggest commander of what will become the commander of what will become the biggest Western force in Syria, fighting against the Islamic State. And this could not come at a worst time for the French president, who is already facing a lot of problems here at home with that wave of discontent over government policies here in France that have been threatening to shake the stability of his uh, presidency. And now he will have to find a way to continue engaged in this war that the French don't see as a war in a faraway land between people that they know nothing about uh, as the Syria war might be perceived in the US. This is a conflict right on Europe's doorstep between Europeans on both sides of the battlefield.
Well, Annalise, you touched on it there. You said uh, that France is now uh, the biggest foreign power in Syria. Just to give us a little bit more uh, on that. How heavily invested uh, is France in Syria? Well, uh, France started what they call Operation Shamal against ISIS in Iraq and Syria back in 2014. This was an operation that was an air operation only. Only airstrikes were in place, at least in the beginning. But for the past two years, we know about the presence of uh, French troops, French uh, boots, on the ground and uh, we don't know exactly their location nor the number. Experts suggest that there, are, there might be between 70 and 200 French special forces in Syria. And now, of course, Emmanuel Macron will have to decide whether or not he can keep those forces there and reinforce the commitment that French has, that France has made to the Kurds or if, like the United States, France will also throw the West's biggest ally against ISIS under the bus. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Annelise Borges there uh, in Paris. And we're going to stay in France uh, because Pre President Macron uh, has called for a return to calm and uh, order as the so-called Yellow Vest protests continued for another uh, weekend uh, this weekend. Judith Prescott has more on that. The latest footage of a policeman pointing his gun on protesters as a colleague tries to lift his motorcycle off the ground made the headlines in France. Since the so-called Yellow Vest movement started, the French president has managed to stay out of the public eye. But after Saturday's clashes in Paris, or as French media calls it, Act 6, Emmanuel Macron had to weigh in. During his trip to Chad, he called for a return to calm and order. That's what our country needs, cohesion and unity. A sincere commitment to a strong collective cause and divisions must be appeased. The French president also warned that those responsible for the attack against the agents would be held accountable. The interior minister monitored things throughout the day. I was in contact with him. It goes without saying that the most severe legal response will be applied. Now order, calm and cohesion must reign. Christophe Castaner reacted in Paris during the weekend after hearing about the clashes in the heart of the French capital. The French Minister of Interior said many on the ground were not in Paris to protest. Some people come to this demonstration with rage because they hate our institution, they hate law enforcement agents just because they work in the force, just because they represent the republic. That's the why they've been once again attacked and that's the why we're forced to react in proportional manner. Later this morning, the Prime Minister should meet members of the police motorbike unit attacked last Saturday. The Paris public prosecutor opened an investigation for assault against a police officer. So far, nobody has been detained in relation to the incident. Judith Prescott, Euronews.